Hey again, it's me, Sean, from Heroes of on YouTube. Uh, we're in a different venue right now. We're upstairs in my kitchen. I'm uh, currently cooking dinner for the family. So what we're going to be talking about today is combat and how combat can slow things down in your game. Um, I'm a little nervous about uh, running D&D again. It's been a little while since I ran D&D. And um, I really don't want to have the game slow down and be boring. I want it to be quick paced, fast action. I feel like that's kind of what uh, Waterdeep Dragon Heist is all about. It's a, um, it's a quick paced story. Um, so I want to be able to be able to have that represented in the combat as well. And uh, so what I did was I um, went to my buddy Jack, uh, uh, at Blackwater Johnny on Instagram if you've, uh, if you've seen him on there. Um, and uh, I asked him, he used to be our, our DM for years and years in the Heroes of Hakathra game, which is where we get our name from. And um, he's probably one of the most experienced DMs that I know personally. And so I asked him what his uh, thoughts were on the top five things that could go wrong in combat and in your game. And uh, he um, has this to say. Hello sports fans, it's Jack from Heroes Of, and I know I'm supposed to be doing a follow-up video uh, from a while back on my uh, acquisition of new players, uh, but that is still ongoing. I have fed a, met a few new players up in my area, and uh, they're really cool, and it's coming together, but I just I don't have a full party as of yet, so nothing too exciting to report. Just that uh, <clears throat> reaching out to the community and looking for more players. Now, Sean from Heroes Of reached out to me and said, Jack, can you think of five things that happen in game uh, that could make it quicker with regards to combat running the game? And I came up with my top five and uh, we're going to go through them. And I think believe Sean is going to also interject and comment on them as well. So here we go. Jack's uh, top five um, things to uh, overcome uh, in terms of trying to make combat quicker for Dungeons and Dragons. Number five, uh, players should and must pay attention even if it's not their turn. This is a really good point that Jack makes. Um, it's important for each player to pay attention to the game, not just to their own player, but to what, what's happening in your group. This is a team effort, by the, uh, obviously, and so it's really important for you to know what's happening in combat. Um, if it's, it comes to your turn and you have, were dead set on uh, hitting a fireball, um, and you say, I'm going to cast a fireball at that spot, but there are no bad guys anymore, and you are now just casting a fireball amidst your friends, that's a bad move. Um, so it's really important for people, uh, for players to not totally check out of the game and just focus on, uh, on their part. This is a group effort and this is, well, it's teamwork, right? So um, th th that's an important point. Number four, keep non-game chatter to a minimum. Uh, try to get your, uh, your bashing of The Last Jedi done prior to your game. Uh, it does require a certain amount of time for any fan that is worth their ilk, so you will need to get it done. You'll have to, uh, you know, get all that out in the open, criticize uh, Ryan Johnson and Kathleen Kennedy and Disney and get all that out of the way and taken care of because it, it does take up quite a bit of time when, when you're gaming. Um, so uh, I, would, I would advise to do that. Get the, the Last Jedi bashing organized and, uh, and done prior to game. It's a good idea. I really like this one that Jack says. Um, it's uh, It happens at every table. Every table I've been to, um, doesn't matter if you play twice a week or once a month, you're gonna chat, friends are gonna get together. Um, the heroes and I play uh, once a week for about four hours. And um, it's not a lot of time, especially when we spend most of it hating on The Last Jedi, like Jack was saying. It's hard though, The Last Jedi really sucked. So you can't blame us. Um, but. Um, a good way, like Jack says, uh, is to get the chatting done at the beginning. Just like he says, um, so a lot, half an hour before uh, the game and say, okay, now let's talk about the, the new Avengers trailer, or like today I think was the new Captain Marvel trailer. Let's talk about the new Captain Marvel trailer that came out, and what are your opinions on this, opinions on that. But when the DM declares that it's time to begin, the players have to be focused on the game itself. Um, that's not to say that you're not allowed to joke and uh, to banter throughout the game. It's important for us to, to talk, that's why we get together, but um, it lies on the DM to make sure that he holds a tight rein on the leash of his players. Um, you don't have to be an asshole about it, but don't be a pushover either. 
Number three, prevent DM panic, meaning be prepared, have uh, certain tools at your side to prepare uh, yourself for things that the party is going to throw at you that you um, that you didn't have planned necessarily in your in your prep. Number two, if you're using terrain and minis, please uh, consider getting all that stuff uh, built prior to. Make sure it's on the table, your map, um, and for miniatures, you can put those inside of Ziploc bags, design each encounter separately. I would prepare at least three uh, in their entirety, three encounters for the evening, and then you're ready to go, and then you can easily keep the mystery on the board. You can have the map down, maybe covered, maybe not, but at least keep the tchotchke uh, maybe organized in bags. It's a good thing to do ahead of time. Points three and two, uh, the DM panic lists of guild names and uh, street names and tavern names. And um, putting your minis and terrain together is brilliant. Um, I actually never would have thought of this stuff. I'm really glad that I asked Jack's opinion uh, because he always has great ideas and this is one of the better ones, I, I, I think anyways. Um, I'm definitely gonna do this. I'm gonna come up with a bunch of fake tavern names and fake names of guards and just in case my player says, oh, and what's your name, sir? Jeez, uh, now I gotta come up with a name on the spot. And so instead of doing that, I'm gonna have a list of random names next to me. Uh, well, my name is Jebediah Rankin. It's a stupid, cheesy name, but at least I have an answer. And I don't have to spend any time thinking about it. Um, same thing with the terrain. Um, if I already have my terrain all set up, now, more than likely, it might not happen that way. The terrain, the, the bar or the tavern or the street corner that you set up as you're with your little tchotchke, um, might not happen. They might not go that direction. But if it does, you, you're ready to go. And like Jack says, keeping your uh, the bad guys that you're going to fight in a mini and labeled is, is a really great idea. I, I fully support this. And number one, the number one reason, according to DM Jack here, uh, that will keep your game quick and moving is never, ever let a necromancer in your game. Seriously. Never. This, this last comment about the uh, necromancer is uh, actually an inside joke within our group. Um, I think what he's really trying to mean is that uh, spellcasters have way more to consider than uh, other characters. A, I play a monk in our Heroes of Catholic game and I'm pretty much doing flurry blows every single round. Now I have some abilities, some, uh, some techniques that I've learned over the, uh, uh, over the years that we've played that I can throw in there for flavor and for effect, but ultimately I'm punching. And a fighter is going to swing, but a spellcaster has to think of radius and circumference. And um, uh, is this a uh, standard action? Is this a full round action? And in 5e, you have to think about: is this a concentration spell? Is it not a concentration spell? So there's a lot of factors to think about. And um, if a spellcaster is not ready or not fully knowledgeable in all these things, their turn could take a little longer than normal. Um, there's no hate thrown. Um, it's it's funny to suggest not to have a, a necromancer in your game. But I, uh, I totally agree, never have one in your game. Ever. Finally, just to add a couple quick points to what we were talking about here. Um, one of the good ways of being able to make sure combat runs smoothly is to have a really good way to record initiative. Um, I found that my old way of having a scrap piece of paper on the side and just writing numbers down doesn't really work well. Um, I've seen on uh, Instagram a couple of forms that I plan on using can't remember from who on uh, on Instagram exactly, but I um, saw a couple of really cool forms that they use where they record their numbers and they have the, their armor classes next to them. So uh, all that information is all right there on one piece of paper. Really, really, really great idea. Um, I'm gonna start using that now too. Um, and uh, other than that, uh, I guess try to limit pee breaks. Um, going to the bathroom takes up a lot of time. So try to maybe, maybe like only everyone pees before or afterwards, or if you have money, you can install plumbing in everyone's seat and they can just poo and pee right there, you know, that might make the group, you know, uh, closer together, you know, the, the group that uh, pees together stees together. Anyways, um, that's that's it for this week. We don't have much more uh, to talk about. Um, if uh, anything else comes up, we'll, we'll post. But uh, other than that, thanks again. And um, enjoy your week. Later. Bye.
Uh, also on my top five, uh, just as a note here, uh, totally guilty on all accounts as a DM from each one of these. I'm just going through them, uh, paying attention when it's not your turn. Sometimes I'm not even paying attention when it is my turn, and it's always your turn as the dungeon master. So, you know, uh, keep non-game chatter to a minimum. Totally guilty. Talk about, you know, non sequitur, tangentials all night long. Absolutely, I've tortured my, many players. Uh, with my antics on that one preventing dm panic yeah sure be prepared uh i should take my own advice uh i'm you know quite often flipping through you know notes and books and 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 taking up time doing that absolutely guilty that's why it's on my list um using train and minis prep yes i'm usually pretty good for that one normally not scrambling uh if i'm using that kind of stuff but anyway it's on my list and then uh yeah No necromancers ever.